Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk, we're going to introduce and start to talk about partial fractions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down into a four part series. In this first part, what we're going to talk about is we're going to really make sure we're perfect at decomposing um, partial fractions. Okay. Once we're perfect at that, I'm going to show you an easy example. Then I'll show you a harder example. Then in the fourth part, what we'll do is I'll show you an example where you need to do polynomial long division first before we even start to do partial fractions. But like I said, we'll get there, we'll get there, okay? But let's just start off first in this first part by learning how to decompose. Now for me, what I have is I have two rules. And my two rules that I made um, for partial fractions is I want one less on top and I want to repeat as needed. I know it's ambiguous, just hang tight. We'll run through several examples as to how to decompose it. Now, with this one less on top, I just want you to jot this down. I want you to write constant, linear, and quadratic. And this is going to come into play in just a sec. Okay? These are my only two rules. So let's run through different um, situations so we know how to decompose it. So let's take a look at this first scenario. For this first scenario, what I have, let's do, uh, let's do this. For this first scenario, what I have is I have 1 over x plus 1 times x plus 2. Okay. The reason I'm going to split this into a over x plus 1 plus b over x plus 2 is I look at each parenthesis. In this first parenthesis, this x plus 1 is a linear function. And 1 less than a linear function is a constant. So what you're going to do is you're going to put an arbitrary constant over on top of that x plus 1. Then I move on to the next parentheses. It's another linear function. And so I put a different constant. We'll call that constant b over x plus 2. So let's get a little bit harder. I actually do this. Let's take a look at number 2. So number 2, what I have is I have 1 over x plus 1 times x plus 2 squared. I'm looking on the inside of the parentheses. And inside this parentheses, this x plus 1 is linear. Because it's linear, I'm putting an arbitrary constant a on top. But this is where it changes. For b, or sorry, for this x plus 2, this x plus 2 is linear. So because I have that, a linear inside that parentheses, I'm going to put an arbitrary constant b on top. But notice how it's repeated. Notice how there's two of them. And because there's two of them, then I need to repeat it again. But all I care about is the inside of the parentheses. And inside the parentheses is a linear function. So you're going to put a constant c over that. And just as an FYI, if I had 1 over x plus... Oops, just kidding. If I had 1 over x plus 1 times x plus 2 cubed, this would be a over x plus 1 plus b over x plus 2. But it's repeated, so i got to go plus c over x plus 2 squared, but i got to repeat it again because I have three of them, so plus d over x plus 2 cubed. And so that's what I mean by if you have repeated parentheses, just repeat as needed. But as for what goes on on top, all you care about is what's inside the parentheses. Okay, so that's how you deal with number two. Let's take a look at number three. So number three, what I have is I have 1 over x squared plus 1 times x plus 2. Take a look at this x squared plus 1. This x squared plus 1 is what's called an irreducible quadratic, which means you can't reduce it, right? You can't factor it. If you can factor a quadratic, factor it. But I can't. And so, because what I have on bottom is a quadratic, 1 less than that is going to be an arbitrary linear. So, I'm going to put an arbitrary linear ax plus b over that x squared plus 1. And then I move on to the next parentheses at x plus 2, and that's linear. So I'll put an arbitrary constant c over that x plus 2. So now for number 4, what I want you to do, number 4, try to pause this video and see if you can figure out number 4. And if you can get number 4 correct, man, you got it. Um, and so try to do that by yourself, pause it, and then we'll see if we got it right. Okay, I hope you paused it and tried it because the way that this one's going to look is like this. This x squared plus 1 is an irreducible quadratic, so I put an arbitrary linear ax plus b over that x squared plus 1. But look, I got 2. 
I got two x squared plus ones, so you need to repeat as needed, so I do it again. I go again, x squared plus one squared, and inside the parentheses is a quadratic, so I put an arbitrary linear, cx plus d. Once I've repeated as needed, I move on to the next parentheses. The next parentheses is x plus two squared. So, but inside this x plus two is a linear, so I put an arbitrary constant, e, over that x plus two, and then, but there's two of them. So I need to repeat, and so I go x plus two squared, but still inside the parentheses is linear, so you put an arbitrary constant f over that x plus two squared. This is how you're gonna decompose it, okay? Make sure that um, partial fraction decomposition is good, because in the next video what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start off with a relatively easy problem, but then we'll also learn how to solve for the A, B, C, and D, and so forth. So this is decomposition. Join me in the next video, and we'll do a, a sample problem dealing with partial fractions.